What's going on, folks? Canucks rookie camp starts today, Thursday, September 16th, and their on-ice session is tomorrow, Friday, September 17th. This is my second take recording this because my mic was muted for the first 10 minutes. So uh, camp is going for two days. They got fitness testing today, Thursday, the 16th. They'll be on the ice on Friday, the 17th in Vancouver at Rogers Arena. In this video, we're going to go over each of the players that are participating in this camp, which we have listed off to the side here. Also in the coming in the coming days, I'll be unveiling my plans for covering the Canucks this season. Make sure you're subscribed for that and leave a comment on who on this this list here you are most excited to watch. Is it Vasily Podkolzin? Is it Daniela Klimovich? Maybe it's Jet Wu. We're going to go over all the players right now. In goal, Arthur Silovs, the lone rookie Although Michael DiPietro on Friday will be stepping in to fill the other net during practice. Silovs is a 20-year-old Latvian net miner who the Canucks picked in the sixth round in the 2019 draft. Six foot four, which is large, but for a, for a goalie, it's pretty normal nowadays. A touch over 200 pounds. Uh, since he was drafted in a pretty mediocre 2019-2020 season with the Barry Colts, only an 891 save percentage. Uh, last year, he did step into a game with the Manitoba Moose in the AHL, stopped 23 of 25 in that one game. So he might project to be an NHL backup one day. It is a ways away, uh, but he's looking to solidify a spot as hopefully the backup in the AHL this season for the Abbotsford Canucks. On defense, we got three players to touch on here going into rookie camp. Uh, the first one, we're going in alphabetical order, order Alex Can Oak Leaper, uh, whose name you might notice if you're a Vancouver Giants fan. He's a big six foot four defenseman who the Canucks signed to an AHL deal over the offseason. Uh, he's already 21 years old. He's looking to impress to try to land a spot on the AHL club after the Washington Capitals let him go, didn't sign him to his qualifying offer after they picked him back in 2019 in the sixth round. So he's looking to have a spot in that Abbotsford Canucks defense core. Victor Persson was a sixth round pick just last year by the Canucks. He spent his season in the Swedish Junior Leagues, uh, played 16 games there, had nine points, but was a plus 12 in 16 games, which is very impressive. Uh, probably a long shot to make the NHL one day as a seventh round pick, but definitely looking, definitely looking to carve out an AHL career. Our most notable defenseman here is Jet Wu, an early second round pick uh, three years ago, back in 2018 by the Canucks, getting picked 37th overall. In his draft plus one year, he racked up the points. 66 points in 62 games in 2019, had a bit of a regression in 2020 after being moved from Moose Jaw over to the Calgary Hitmen, uh, and spent last season with the Utica Comets, had five points in 28 games. But look, as a defenseman, points don't tell the whole story. According to most scouting reports, he was really solid as a top four defenseman in the AHL last year. And this year, you think he'll be trying to solidify his spot on that top pairing for the AHL Canucks. Keep an eye on him. Uh, he could be pushing for an NHL roster spot if this year goes particularly well. He could be trying to push for a spot as soon as next season. Uh, and he looks to have maybe second, likely third pairing upside as an NHLer. Now let's get to the forwards. Still going in alphabetical order. We'll start with Carson Focht, 21-year-old center who the Canucks drafted in the fifth round of 2019's draft. Last year in Utica, he had 12 points in 28 games, so not terrible as a pro rookie, his first taste of pro action last year. He might have some NHL upside as a depth piece, but it's probably more likely he'll be in the AHL for a long while. Ethan Keppen was a fourth round pick in 2019, had some controversy this offseason. Controversy is a strong word, but the Canucks didn't submit a qualifying offer to him after his entry level deal expired. So technically he was an unrestricted free agent for a few days. The Canucks circled back, gave him an AHL contract. Uh, so he'll be with the Abbotsford Canucks this season. He only had one point last year in seven games. He likely doesn't have much NHL upside, but will be a decent depth pick depth piece. 
Uh, Danila Klimovic is the first big name on the forward side who we want to chat about. Definitely someone to watch. The Canucks second round pick in this year's draft. Last year in Belarus, he had 52 points in 37 games. It is a Belarusian league, so kind of hard to translate that into, you know, what that might be in uh, the junior leagues around here. Uh, he made headlines as the first player in this draft to sign an NHL contract. Uh, he's got his entry-level deal, and he came out and said, he's like, look, I'm pushing to make the NHL club this year, which everyone said, whoa, all right, sweet. Let's see this guy in training camp, and let's see what he can do. Uh, the Canucks have a lot of flexibility with him, as he wasn't a junior player, and, and sort of if you're in the Canadian junior system, you can't send people to the AHL, only back to junior typically. Um, but since he's coming from Europe, he doesn't really have any restrictions on him. The Canucks can play him in the NHL, they can play him in the AHL, or they could send him to a team in the Quebec Major Junior League to start a uh, an actual junior career out here. It seems like the latter is the most likely option unless he comes out and absolutely impresses the team uh, in main camp starting next week. Um, but he definitely projects to be a real piece of the Canucks in the future, at least we can hope. Uh, Connor Lockhart was a sixth round pick this year by the Canucks, a five foot nine center who scouts online sort of on Twitter and, and in articles that I've read seem to think he's got some real upside to potentially make the NHL one day. He's got a really high motor, uh, an aggressive battle level. He's only 18 years old, so he had an absolute long road ahead and to make the NHL. But a few years down the line, you might see him try to knock on the door. Tristan Nielsen was a Vancouver Giants center who played the full six years in the WHL, went undrafted, signed an AHL team with the Abbotsford Canucks. Look for him to try to make a spot as a depth piece in the AHL, but he's already 21 years old and likely won't see an NHL game. Carl Plasic was a sixth round pick back in 2019, so two years ago by the Canucks, uh, and kind of stagnated after that. Really has had no point increase since then in the Czech League ever since he was drafted. His best season, he had 10 points in 44 games last year with his Czech team. Already 21 years old. Uh, he's going to try to land a spot on the AHL roster, but I think he'll be a stretch to ever play for the Vancouver Canucks. The big name, the one you're all waiting for, Vasily Podkolzin. Uh, this is exciting. Uh, the Canucks marquee pick out of 2019's draft, so just over two years ago. Uh, he struggled a bit in the KHL last year, but it wasn't from lack of effort. Uh, he was consistently pushed down to the third or fourth line or even healthy scratched, uh, which is kind of common in Russia among young players, right? These teams in Russia are trying to win uh, their equivalent of a Stanley Cup over there. They're not going to be playing the 19-year-old kid uh, because they don't care about his development. They want to win a cup, and if that kid's just going to leave for the NHL in a couple years' time, they don't really, they don't try to develop them at all. So it's good that he's in the Canucks system. The Canucks can actually do some development work with him, but he did get some time, some ice time in the World Juniors. He captained the Russian team. He had four points in seven games there, but looked pretty impressive. Looked like he had a really high battle level. Uh, looking to lock down his spot on the NHL club this year. Most people have him penciled in on the third line uh, with Jason Dickinson and Tanner Pearson. Um, but that could change, right? We're going to have Friday's session in, in rookie camp and all of training camp and all the preseason. Um, if he really impresses, we could see him maybe get some second line minutes, uh, with guys like Garland and Horvat. Uh, if he really doesn't do that well, you could see him maybe getting some time in the AHL just as sort of a conditioning stint. Um, you should really expect Vasily Podkolzin to be the best player on the ice on Friday. He's going into a rookie camp where he's playing, uh, alongside guys like Connor Lockhart, Victor Person, guys who are likely a lot worse than the players he was going up, the men he was going up against in the KHL, and the guys he was going up against in the World Juniors. This should be a time for him to absolutely dominate on the ice on Friday. So make sure, uh, make let's make sure that he's actually doing that, uh, and we'll see how he performs in main camp next week. And then our last player to touch on here is Chase Wouters. Chase Wouters, I don't know exactly how his last name is pronounced. Uh, another undrafted player out of the WHL, played a full six years with the Saskatoon Blades, uh, and he's already 20 years old, 21 years old. He's just looking to lock down a spot with the AHL club. 
that's basically all I got for this one. If you enjoyed, leave a like. Uh, and if you're excited for training camp, uh, leave a like, leave a comment. Canucks season is starting up here, folks. Hockey season is back. We're a month away from real regular season hockey. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel as I've got coverage after every single Canucks game, except the ones that I miss. Um, and we're going to have videos all basically every day throughout the season. It's going to be an awesome year. We're looking to skyrocket the channel as the Canucks go on and hopefully compete for a playoff spot this season. Shout out to the people who support us in the membership category. We have uh, a handful of VIPs. So thank you f uh, to you guys as well. And to our backstage members listed here and to Lucas, our goat member. Um, if you are interested in uh, some of the perks of membership, uh, things like having a green name, access to a private Discord chat, uh, and things of that nature. Uh, click that join button, check out the perks, completely optional, unnecessary, but uh, it is a way to support the channel if you feel compelled to. That's it for me, and I will talk to you guys in the next one.